Welcome to the Healthy Heart Show, where we pull back the curtain on conventional medicine and dive into the root causes of cardiovascular health. If you are concerned about high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart attacks, stroke, or atrial fibrillation, this is the place for you. We will provide natural heart information that will help you prevent, treat, and reverse any ailment, leaving pills and procedures out of the picture. Here are your guides to holistic heart health, board-certified cardiologist and Amazon best-selling author, Dr. Jack Wolfson, and natural heart doctor, naturopathic physician, Dr. Lauren Latanza. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Healthy Heart Show. I am naturopathic physician, Dr. Lauren Latanza, here today with our favorite guest, Dr. Jack Wolfson, board certified cardiologist, um, coming to you from your home of the 100 year heart, natural heart doctor. We have a very excellent episode for you today, uh, an all too common symptom. Today, we will be talking about palpitation. So welcome, Dr. Jack Wolfson. Uh, what do you got for us today to talk about with palpitations? Oh, thanks so much, Dr. Latanza. Uh, it's great to connect again. And, you know, pal palpitations is something that, you know, you and I have, you know, have seen, obviously, so many times. And uh, I've certainly seen a lot of it over my 20-year-plus cardiology career. And, uh, it's it, it's a it's an issue that many people suffer with, and it, they really don't get a lot of relief because oftentimes they're told that the palpitations, you know, these feelings that they get, and we'll talk about all kind of what you know what they are and the typical symptoms, but they're often kind of swept under the rug by conventional medicine, or they try a pharmaceutical uh, that only leads to more symptoms and doesn't resolve symptoms. So it's uh, it's really something that we can help out so many people, so many younger women struggle with this it tends to be a younger person's issue and uh, you know again i think it's such a important topic for us to uh, discuss here on the healthy heart show yeah so i mean just kind of a, an overview what what is just what are palpitations what can we say when oftentimes i feel like i ask patients do you have palpitations and that's not a very maybe widely understood uh, piece of terminology that we throw around but what are palpitations yeah, that's a great point. Most people don't come in and complain of palpitations, although it is kind of our medical diagnosis that we call someone with those symptoms. So it's a symptom and, and, and we'll label it as palpitations, but you're right, the, the patient or client typically does. They're going to say heart racing, heart fluttering, heart skipping, heart pounding, flip flops. Uh, those are the typical things that that I know you and I have both heard so many different times. And, uh, you know, ultimately, we'll, we'll label that as palpitations. But what we need to do from there, of course, is to figure out, you know, the why they have those palpitations. And, uh, you know, as we do that, you know, because sometimes people say, well, are they normal? And, uh, you know, they're not normal to have these palpitation symptoms or heart racing or fluttering or skipping, but it's certainly common. And just like anything, th these are happening because of the way we eat, the way we live, the way we think. Uh, and, uh, you know, but, but it's a great opportunity for us to do something about it. Right. And there are many contributing factors. Maybe it's um, a mental emotional component. Maybe it's a medication uh, food sensitivity, maybe it's uh, an underlying arrhythmia that's yet to be diagnosed. Um, so what heart rhythm issues uh, are, are contributing to palpitations? Well, you know, the, what we call like the differential diagnosis, right? What are all the possibilities when somebody has heart racing, fluttering, skipping, uh, flip-flops? And, uh, you know, the most common thing, uh, you know, first of all, it could be nothing, uh, where, you know, we look on a monitor and there's nothing going on. It could be just sinus tachycardia, uh, you know, where the heart is racing and it's almost like they're watching TV, but, they're, but their heart is racing like they're, uh, you know, running a marathon. And of course, that would be abnormal. And then also very common PACs, PVCs, premature atrial complexes, premature ventricular complexes, previously labeled as contractions, but the, the more correct term is, is uh, complexes. And then, of course, it could be something a little more sinister, like atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter or an AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. And even the most sinister of all would be a ventricular tachycardia, which certainly would be a problem. And, you know, what we need to do, obviously, at that point you know, is that we're really looking at, OK, now that we have identified what the symptoms are from, the palpitations are from, what are we going to do about it? Right. 
And, and what makes these so dangerous? Well, you know, with, with atrial fibrillation, uh, atrial fibrillation has a risk with it. Uh, PACs, PVCs, not much of a risk, although uh, PACs, premature atrial complexes, can increase the likelihood of atrial fibrillation down the road. And certainly if somebody has AFib and definitely if they've got a ventricular dysrhythmia, like a ventricular tachycardia, that can be life-threatening. And that's, of course, uh, why we need to figure out exactly what it is. Fortunately, that those issues are not as common. And, uh, you know, ultimately when someone has symptoms of palpitations, skips, you know, flip-flops and stuff like that, we can figure it out when they're linked to significant lightheadedness or, or, or syncope passing out, then it becomes more of a medical emergency that we need to really dive into what is leading to that particular, uh, you know, thing. And of course, we'll talk about the tests, you know, to diagnose that. Yeah. Um, so knowing that, you know, maybe you're having these palpitations just intermittently. So they're just occasionally, maybe once a week, you wake up with your heart pounding or you feel like you skip a beat here and there. It's not always the case that you find yourself on the table getting an ECG uh, at that moment in time. So what is the best way to really test for figuring out what is actually uh, the underlying situation, the underlying arrhythmia? Yeah, the best test I think is that, you know, the ZO patch that we do, it's just a small uh, device, sits on the outside of the chest for, for two weeks time and then somebody peels it off their chest and throws it, you know, into an envelope. Uh, and then of course we get to interpret that to really see what's happening. If someone has symptoms, uh, you know, that are frequent enough uh, inside of a two week window, then that's great. If someone says, oh, I only have symptoms every few months, uh, that's not going to be the best test for them. But if someone's having frequent symptoms on a daily or every few days, we should be able to catch something on, on the ZO. But that's also a great point too, as far as safety. You know, when someone has symptoms for many years, that's typically a safe thing. When someone says they've been having symptoms of racing heart feelings for the last couple of weeks and also had an episode where they passed out, that of course makes things a lot more uh, you know, urgent. But uh, you know, to your point, the, the ECG is a beneficial tool and everybody should get that, but it's not likely going to catch the cause of their symptoms unless they have that, uh, you know, that symptomatology in that, in that, you know, 10 second window of, of the EKG. Yeah. Yeah. I, I often talk to patients and if it, if it is falls within, you know, once every two weeks, you have this a couple times a month, then we do want to get that ZO patch going so that we can really qualify exactly what the arrhythmia is going on. Uh, yeah, the zeo that? patch. I mean, as you know, like the zeo patch monitors every single heartbeat for two weeks, so it picks up so much. You know, in my old days as a practicing cardiologist, we used to implant a lot of uh, what are called loop recorders, and those actually go under the skin, and those can stay in for a couple of years. And those are reserved again for people that have severe symptoms. And they occur pretty sporadically. So let's say every three months they suddenly pass out. That's a great uh, implanted device. But most people, we don't need to go that far, you know? Yeah. Uh, what other testing would you say is necessary? Do we want to get an echocardiogram, maybe a stress test? Well, an echocardiogram, I think, helps to what we call, you know, risk, you know, stratify someone. Are they at any kind of risk or danger? Certainly somebody with a ventricular rhythm problem, with somebody with atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, we need an echocardiogram. PACs, PVCs, not so much. Uh, I think a lot of, you know, the cardiologists reflexively order the stress testing. Obviously, that's how the cardiologists make a lot of their money. I really think the only time stress testing is needed uh, would be if somebody has ventricular tachycardia. And even in that scenario, the best thing to do maybe to skip the stress test and go straight to uh, an angiogram or even a CT angiogram to uh, assess for significant obstructive coronary artery disease. But those are pretty much the main tests uh, that we're going to do uh, kind of like, you know, with that standard cardiology hat, I know you and I are going to dive into the, the stuff that we do at Natural Heart Doctor uh, to really help these people. Yeah. So in the conventional, uh, in the conventional space, what pharmaceuticals are tried to rid these palpitations, rid these racing heartbeats or skipped beats um, that patients get administered? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I've had so much experience with this over the years. And unfortunately, the, in the toolbox of the cardiologist, they don't have much. They've got beta blockers. They've got calcium channel blockers, uh, beta blockers like atenolol, metoprolol, carvedilol, calcium channel blockers, verapamil, diltiazem. 
and they're just not effective. And the way I like to explain this too, Dr. Latanza, is that the, it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, th those medicines slow down the heart and they may not block the, the abnormal PAC or PVC from coming through. So what happens is it's like, if you go to the, the, the carousel at, at the amusement park, and that's kind of like spinning around and on the carousel, it's got the horses and all that stuff, you know, kind of going up and down and the kids love it. Well, if the carousel is going very fast, if you, you can't get on there, because uh, obviously that would be very dangerous. So you're not going to try and jump on a fast moving carousel. But if it slows down enough, you can get on that carousel. Now, I don't advise that, of course, that can be dangerous as well, but at least you could. And that's the same thing with the heart. If the heart's going fast, typically those extra beats can't get in there. If the heart is slowing down, uh, uh, it, because of the pharmaceutical, now those extra beats have an opportunity to jump in. So a lot of times beta blockers and calcium channel blockers make somebody's symptoms worse, which is why so many people come to see us, you know, for this issue. Yeah, they get fed up because what they've been thrown the book by conventional and it's still not working. They're still not getting rid of their main concerns. Uh, and that's where we come in. So uh, what's, uh, what would you say is the overview of the philosophy of our treatment here at Natural Heart Doctor? Well, our philosophy, of course, is based on uh, eat well, live well, and think well. And, you know, from there we go into test, don't guess, and then we use evidence-based supplements. Again, we want to know why. Why does someone have PACs or PVCs? Why does someone have sinus tachycardia? Why does someone have atrial rhythm problems like atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter? Why does somebody have ventricular tachycardia? Why does somebody have AV nodal reentrant tachycardia? And I think what's, what's so great about what we do is that we offer people so much success. We really have a, uh, just a bunch of uh, uh, wonderful testimonials as well from, uh, from people who've achieved uh, such success with our, our, our methodologies, not only for, for, palpitations, uh, but it's certainly everything else. But, uh, you know, that's what we do. Eat well, live well, think well, test, don't guess, evidence-based supplements. That's natural heart doctor. Yeah. And I know you've said it before and it's so true is that if we find the cause, then within that lies the cure. So we just have to really use our specialized testing. Um, but let's kind of break, break down the eat well, live well, think well. So as it pertains to palpitations, what, what will we do to eat well? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, one thing, too, is that as we get to eat well, we can also talk about, you know, keeping keeping a diary uh, around your symptoms. You don't have to keep a diary all the time, although you're certainly welcome to. But keeping a diary, if your symptoms are bad on a particular day, what did you eat the night before? How did you sleep the night before? Uh, did uh, you drink any alcohol the night before? You know, just, you know, trying to look for some kind of common thread. Was it a food? Was it, uh, uh, you know, you know, was it poor night sleep? Was it alcohol? Was it, was it stress? You know, did you get into a fight with, uh, with your spouse or significant other or something, you know, work related, you know, that led to that travel related, uh, you know, that's what we, you know, dial in with that. But, you know, we, when we talk about eat well, our recommendations are always the same for whatever medical diagnosis uh, it is. Our philosophy, of course, is eat like our ancestors did, free range grass fed meats, uh, nose to tail nutrition, to eating the, the liver and the heart. And, uh, you know, we got that new product called Kickstart My Heart. So that's the liver and heart combination product uh, from free range uh, bison. And uh, we, we recommend eating a lot of seafood because, of course, omega-3s are absolutely critical when it comes to quieting down the heart, normal heart rhythm. And then from there, you know, uh, 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 eggs, avocado, coconuts, uh, nuts, seeds, fruit in season, uh, vegetables. That's our strategy. You know, we do find a lot of people that have, uh, have, have, you know, gluten is a major factor when it comes to palpitations. We've got testimonials and we've seen that before again, where the gluten consumption leads to leaky gut, leaky gut leads to leaky heart. And when you have leaky heart, you suffer the heart rhythm, you know, consequences of it. So, uh, you know, remember, no matter what diet you're on, always make it, always make your food organic. That's a great place to start. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that you mentioned uh, pairing that with a, like a nutrition journal, a symptom journal, um, so that you can say, okay, well, did I go out to eat at a restaurant? Was it something that was completely out of my control that I ingested? And maybe that really was a trigger 
Um, so working to identify the triggers is very helpful in working to identify the cure for your palpitation. So I think that that really goes hand in hand. Um, I, I know a common question that I get, and I'm sure you do as well, but what, do, what how do we feel about coffee in patients with palpitations? Well, I think, you know, once again, that's where the, where, you know, where the diary comes in. Like every time you have caffeine, is that what does it? Uh, you know, we, again, uh, cardiologists tend to blanket statements, say everybody to avoid caffeine or coffee. And I think that's really a mistake. Obviously, there's so much evidence uh, on, on the cardiovascular and other health benefits of coffee, especially the good stuff like cardiology coffee. But the, the um, you know, again, if, if you drink caffeine, and it makes your symptoms bad, well, obviously you're going to have to make a decision whether or not you want to avoid it. But as far as caffeine and coffee causing life-threatening rhythm problems, obviously the answer is no. Uh, I, I, I would think alcohol is much more of a problem, not so much while you're drinking the alcohol, but the next day, kind of like that holiday heart syndrome, uh, which is very common to lead to heart rhythm issues and certainly atrial fibrillation. So I'd be much more likely to think that alcohol is a factor uh, as opposed to caffeine. The Healthy Heart Show will be right back after we take this quick break to hear from our sponsor. Would you like to drink great tasting coffee that's also good for your heart health? Cardiology Coffee is your answer. This five-star rated coffee is delicious. It's a gourmet coffee that begins with whole organic beans, hand-selected, and carefully roasted. It's tested and certified to be free of pesticides, mold, and other toxins. Cardiology Coffee is great for your heart, and you're going to love how it tastes. Order now online at cardiologycoffee.com. Now back to the Healthy Heart Show. Absolutely. I, I, I talk to patients and often find that it's like they can't drink because the following day they have this anxiety. I kind of call it like a hangxiety. You have these palpitations, the, the shakiness, all of that. It's really, you can identify it as some electrolyte imbalances, there's some fluid shift, uh, all, toxins floating around in your body. So it's certainly doing yourself more of a disservice than any benefit that you can find in said drinks. Um, how about live well? What, what can we do to live better uh, in terms of palpitations? Yeah, live well is a much more uh, extensive kind of thing. Because again, like right, everybody focuses on the food story, but there's so much more to it. For example, under the live well category, you know, sleep. We know that when you get adequate amounts of sleep, your heart rhythm tends to uh, uh, be better than if you have a short amount of sleep, you know, six, seven hours or less, that you're much more likely to have heart rhythm issues. So make sure you get your sleep. Ideally, we tell people, hey, listen, go to sleep with the, you know, right after the sun down, wake up naturally before the sunrise, watch the sunrise, watch the sunset. That's the best way to do it. Of course, you know, the more sun exposure you get, the higher your levels of vitamin D and so many other factors. So we wanna make sure we get plenty of sun exposure. So we get our sleep, we get our sun, we get our physical activity, preferably outdoors. The more time we're outdoors, the better. And then we wanna avoid environmental toxins and pollutants which can easily lead to heart rhythm issues. Don't forget to be under the care of a chiropractor that's fantastic for the heart and heart rhythm and address those dental issues in a holistic fashion as well. Absolutely. And I think also under the blanket of live well would certainly be um, pharmaceuticals. So maybe, you know, you're, you're over, even if you're just on maybe just thyroid medication, if you're overdoing it on thyroid medication, you might have some racing heart, some real, kind of thumping in your chest. Um, so there's all kinds of medications that can contribute to palpitations as well. So working to live a life without pharmaceuticals as best you can, you know, certainly under the care of a provider, um, but working to identify the true cause uh, and the true treatment of any ailment. Um, yeah, thyroid, thyroid is an interesting one, certainly, you know, when you bring that up, because I think uh, a lot of us, you know, whether it's patient demand or the doctors that kind of reach for thyroid replacement, uh, I, I think that definitely uh, can, can lead to issues that we should look at as well. But you know, do you, what, what are your thoughts, again, about, uh, about hormone replacement therapy, whether we're talking about uh, males, females? Have you seen anything really that, that you thought uh, would be related to heart rhythm problems that people are having? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm all for hormone replacement if it's truly necessary. I can't tell you how many patients I have that come in here and they're really, really overdone on the hormone replacement, be it thyroid, testosterone, estrogens, 
they feel lousy on their progesterone and they're taking too much. So they're sleepy all day. So I see patients all over the board and maybe that practitioner that administered those was trying to do the right thing. But, um, you know, the patients come in with their testosterone well over the 1200s and then their blood is like molasses. They're putting their fist through a wall. They're racing. So there's all there's a, a, a narrow window that uh, really need to do some hormone replacement. Um, and it should be done, I think, in a conservative approach. Yeah, you know, I think it's often that um, even a lot of holistic doctors, they reach for hormones first. And uh, you and I are both in favor of hormone optimization. But let's make sure that we dial in this eat well, live well, think well philosophy test, don't guess, use some evidence-based supplements. And then if the hormones are still not where they need to be, then that's an opportunity to use, you know, the bioidenticals and most natural means, but also keeping a close eye that, yeah, people aren't being overdosed with, uh, yeah. you know, with them. Yeah, they often are. And, and really, it's if, if you've got low energy, the first treatment approach should not be to increase your thyroid or increase your testosterone. Figure out why you're tired. So we, we look at it with a much more discerning eye, I think. All right, let's talk about ThinkWell. I think this well, is a big well, conversation. Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, I mean, stress just, just, you know, does not get the billing that, that it needs. Again, there's so much debate about nutrition. And of course, there's so much, uh, you know, trials, that, you know, with pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. But we need to really take a good stress inventory uh, on people uh, because, as we have, you know, stress in our lives, it leads to abnormal adrenaline. It could lead to adrenal issues. Again, all these different hormonal issues. When, when you're under stress, your body is not taking care of itself. So, so many different factors, you know, related to that. And again, when uh, people complain all the time, you know, when, you know, it, it's, it's a stressful, you know, situation, all of a sudden their start, heart starts to pound. So again, that would be normal. If you're, if you think you're getting chased by a tiger, your heart's going to pound. But uh, that being said, again, when people uh, aren't happy and they're not happy in their relationships, they're not happy in their career, uh, you know, it, it undoubtedly leads to, you know, heart rhythm problems. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, the anxiety and stress ridden society that we live in, and it's just become normalized to be kind of burnt out and worn too thin and uh, overburdened uh, has become all too normalized. And, you know, your, your body, I always say the issues are in the tissues. So your body recognizes it, even if you choose to mentally sweep things under the rug um, your, your hormones are still cranking. You're still pumping out cortisol and adrenaline and all, your body recognizes it. And that's the normal physiologic response is to increase your heart rate. Um, but over time, we don't want that because that will really just increase inflammation systemically. Um, so we want to work to identify and figure out the best uh, approach for you to, you know, it's really easy for us to say to use good stress management techniques and calm your stress. But uh, what works for one person doesn't always work for another. So figuring out what it is that you can do in your day-to-day -day life to uh, properly manage those stressors. And then obviously when you are under stress, right, you're not eating the right foods, you're not getting the sleep, you're not doing the self-care, you know, kind of things that you should be doing. So yeah, to your point, uh, you know, certainly seek out help, you know, when necessary to, uh, to help you deal with these issues. Very important. Uh, and, you know, and, and I think, you know, you know, in your experience, you've seen the same thing where, uh, you know, whether it's a heart attack, it's a stroke, it's a heart rhythm problem, almost invariably it was precipitated by some, uh, episode of stress, uh, whether the person, you know, like you said, realized it or not, there was, there was something and, and then they had the symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. And I, um, actually, as you mentioned that you're choosing to eat when you're stressed out and if you are eating, no matter what it is, you're eating while you're stressed, you're um, shown to increase your inflammatory response from that meal as well. So if you're stressed out, like don't sit at your table, at your work table, your work desk and eat your meal. So step away, make time for your meal and try to calm down, uh, make space for that. So when we bring it to test and don't guess, so we can't just guess if we're doing it right. What would you say are the most important tests to assess in a patient with palpitations? 
Well, you know, it's, um, you know, we do, you know, different uh, levels of testing. We, you know, we've developed kind of like levels one through four. And I think level two testing is, is a great place for the majority of people to start. So with that level two testing, of course, we do the, all the advanced cardiovascular markers and we do things like thyroid, but also inside there is the inflammation. If you've got inflammation, you're likely going to have heart rhythm problems. So Let's find out if you're inflamed. Let's check your thyroid. Let's check your blood sugar. Let's check your uric acid, your homocysteine, all those things. And then we're also going to do a deep dive into intracellular vitamins and minerals. A lot of people, they're told, oh, if you've got palpitations, take magnesium. Well, it's not always a magnesium issue. Let's test, don't guess. What if it's a potassium issue and your magnesium is fine? What are your omega-3 levels, your vitamin D levels, your vitamin A levels, your glutathione, CoQ10, right? We go on and on with all that you know, super duper in-depth testing. And then also we talked previously about that leaky gut, leaky heart. So let's test you for, for leaky gut. And uh, that test, of course, is very valuable where we're looking at leaky gut and we're looking at the, the wheat and gluten sensitivities. And then we do the triple toxin test. Are you high in toxic metals? And those metals can interfere with magnesium and potassium and other functions, for example, like beryllium is something we test for that most people have never heard of, but beryllium interferes with magnesium. So we need to make sure that's not an issue. And then we also, we do the mold mycotoxins and mold mycotoxins released from the molds undoubtedly lead to cardiovascular rhythm issues amongst everything else. And then also the environmental toxins panel. So could your symptoms be from pesticides or from phthalates or parabens or VOCs or plastics? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. You and I see it on a daily basis. So that's what we do. The, the test don't guess. And once we find those abnormalities, then we start to uh, replace with the evidence-based supplements, along with the eat well, live well, think well, and that's why we're so successful. Right, and, and you know, I often tell patients, like we don't wanna just throw mud at a wall and see what sticks. We, yeah, sometimes magnesium helps with a lot of patients. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. We don't wanna just guess. We have to get it in black and white rather than just throwing supplements at something and assuming that it's gonna work. So we gotta get it there in black and white, see what your body is calling for. Um, and, and then we make a, uh, approach a personalized approach for that individual patient. Um, so what are some of the more common evidence-based supplements that are successful in treating palpitations? Uh, well, you know, I think, you know, uh, you know, magnesium certainly has a role, but you know, we want to make sure what the levels are. But I mean, I would say first and foremost, magnesium can be helpful. Any kind of magnesium except for magnesium oxide. That's why we created our product called Magna 5. And that's a great place to start. You know, something like, uh, you know, two caps two times a day or three caps at bedtime often helps. But don't forget about potassium, right? So our potassium boost is a, is a high dose potassium powder. Um, you know, pretty much anybody is fine with these as long as they're not in kidney, you know, uh, you know, with renal failure, kid, you know, severe kidney disease, they're fine with those. Uh, Omega-3 supplementation can be very helpful in this arena as well. The B vitamins are a great thing to support uh, uh, a good probiotic. So, so many different things can, can do it. But again, ultimately, we go into the test, don't guess. And that's where we, you know, try and make a difference. So many people are out there and they're having issues. They're trying to self-diagnose, trying to self-treat. And, and they may stumble across the right answer. But, uh, you know, again, ideally when you're dealing with, uh, with doctors, you know, professionals like us at Natural Heart Doctor, that's how people get the success. Yeah, I, I actually had a new patient just the other day and she was having severe daily palpitations that were lasting these episodes two hours or more. Um, she hadn't had an outright diagnosis of what the um, arrhythmia was, but we did uh, all of these testing. We're waiting for her zeo patch to come back, but her micronutrient test was the lowest omega-3s I've ever seen on anybody. We got her on some omega-3s, no palpitations since. So it can often be a very simple answer if we just do the right testing. Yeah, and I, you know, obviously when we do the testing, it provides so much more information to help their palpitations, but everything else, right? It helps, it helps the brain, helps the, helps the, you know, the liver and the lungs and the digestive tract. And, 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 and really it's also about the hundred year heart. It's, you know, can we help with the, you know, with the palpitation symptoms, but can we also make sure you're on your path to the 100 year heart? And that's where that testing comes in. Oh, wow. And then ideally we come up with our treatment strategies and protocols, and then we retest down the road and we see how we did not only did we you know, resolve your symptoms, but did we also change some of those abnormal blood tests and, and urine tests, which again, keeps you on that path to the 100 year heart.
Absolutely. Yeah, she was elated with the results. And uh, I, I think that more people need to uh, realize that we just need to do it right. So how can people work with Natural Heart Doctor to get help with their symptoms? Well, you know how exactly how they can do that. They can obviously just give us a call and we are happy to help. You know, listen, you can order the testing directly from our website. And again, you, you can go over it with one of the coaches. Uh, you can go over it, of course, with yourself, Dr. Lauren Latanza. You can go over it with Dr. Jack Wolfson. Just get the testing done and go over it with somebody to be able to assist you, you know, on this. And that's what we're here for at Natural Heart Doctor, right? We're here to help people with their symptoms. We're here to keep them out of the hands of the conventional cardiologists, the conventional medical doctors, uh, because they're just not going to get resolution. And I know you and I have both seen so many people who, who have been to the conventional cardiologist, tried in the pharmaceuticals, and it just makes people feel worse. It's certainly not addressing the cause, even if it was to, you know, Band-Aid, right? If someone has PACs, PVCs, it's not because they're deficient in beta blockers. You know, there's a reason for that. And we, that's what we do is that we, we find that reason. Right. Yeah. They've been through the ringer. They're getting fed up, starting to lose hope. Um, so if this sounds like you or somebody, you know, certainly send them our way. We will talk to them, figure out exactly what testing is essential um, and get them on the right path to eat well, live well and think well so that they can get to your 100 year heart. Thank you so much for listening. Any last minute additions, Dr. Jack Wolfson? No, another wonderful episode. I thank you, Dr. Lauren and uh, uh, everybody out there. Yeah, you know, cheers to your 100 year heart. Thank you. That does it for today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to The Healthy Heart Show. Please help us get the word out by liking and subscribing to our podcast and our Facebook page, Natural Heart Doctor. Please show support for our podcast sponsor, Cardiology Coffee, your resource for organic, antioxidant-rich, mold and pesticide-free coffee shipped straight to your door. Learn more by adding at Cardiology Coffee on Instagram and visiting cardiologycoffee.com. This podcast provides materials for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. We encourage you to contact your physician for any of the health issues discussed here.